First, we hear the ominous rumble of bulldozers. Then, the telltale crunch of steel against wood. Neighbors yelling, screaming, babies, children crying. Orders barked through a megaphone. Get up! Stumble outside into the blinding glare of police flashlights. In the chilly, damp, early morning blackness, we shiver and hold each other tightly. A light drizzle is falling. Frightened shadows run everywhere. Sheer terror reigns. Here, on the outskirts of the city, in our refugee camp, we once thought we were safe. Now, officers yank people out of their huts, swear at them, push them, jab them with clubs. Bulldozers attack shacks with people still inside, refusing to leave. A merciless iron fist of destruction. We run through the wreckage, across muddy ground, crouching, turning to avoid being snatched by the police. Someone kicks me hard from behind. I land on my hands and knees in the mud, cursing. A policeman clubs me on the shoulder. I scream. He hisses. Dirty gypsies, filthy dogs, get out! Confusion in the dark, we scramble up a rocky hill and half run, half walk away from the camp, our home for the past two months. To think, 30 families lived here peacefully, in 30 shacks bothering no one. We planted flowers and gardens. Now we flee with the clothes on our back. I've lost track of how many times we've been forced to move from temporary camps like this one since we fled our country and arrived here. Find a neglected piece of land on the edge of a dump where no respectful local would go. We'd scrounge the garbage for scrap wood, metal, junk to build a small shelter. Add a plastic sheet for a roof. Home. No electricity, heating, plumbing, or toilets. We use plastic bags. Now we're hungry, exhausted, unsure where to go. We hope for shelter somewhere in the darkness ahead. My people. The Roma call these walls death marches. Our elders say in the past the Nazis used gas chambers and ovens. Today, others use the cold, starvation, and disease. I call it Ethel.